back again here at the uh, extreme uh, power sports in Columbus Georgia Suzuki demo event here so last video was the uh, Jixxis 1000 and this time I'm gonna ride the uh, V Strump 1050 the not the off-road not the DE version but the regular one with the road bias tires V Strump kind of caught my attention nice little package let's do a quick walk around and have a look at it this is the next bike I am riding, the Suzuki V-Strom 1050. Really comfy bike. I sat on it and I was like, wow, I've got to ride this. So they have two. They have the DE version, which is more off-road bias, with the big wheels, but I opted to ride the one with the, uh, the smaller 19-inch wheels support bias. So let's go ahead and uh, take this for a ride. All right, guys. So, I'm on the V-Strom. And you know what? I decided against the Hayabusa. Because, you know, Hayabusa videos are out there, man. You know, you've got plenty of people with Hayabusa videos. And uh, I'm sure plenty of people with their all kinds of bikes videos. But, you know, what, what, what really interests me are these adventure motorcycles. And... I've ridden the BMW GS and the Multistrada. Have I ridden any other adventure? Or the Africa Twin. So I've never ridden this bike. So I wanted to see what this bike feels like. Now, all the specs on this bike, I'll, I'll put it up here somewhere. So you can pause it and read it real quick. I'm sorry, I, I don't have all the numbers in front of me. I just walked in and both the times they're ready to go for a ride. So. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the riding position is so comfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I can't flat foot, obviously, you know, but I've got most of the, f I guess, my foot down on the, on the ground. So yeah, very easy to find neutral. It's got cruise control. Uh, the switch gear, this switch gear seems exactly the same as the, the GT, the GSXS. GSXS 1000 GT bike that I was riding. This is a little different now. You've got your mode buttons here And then I guess you just go up and down here and change the mode button So we're in a with two ABS and one traction control. We'll change the modes later Why don't we actually start off with C this the uh, The smallest mode I uh, got your turn signals there your horn your uh, passing your high beam switch there and that's pretty much it pretty simple I the not now the the screen here is a little bit smaller than the previous bike I was riding so yeah that's that and uh, yeah I mean let's uh, let's check it out and see how comfortable this is now is this adjustable I guess it is but you're gonna have to I think there's some bolts you're gonna have to loosen up to adjust uh, the windshield but at the moment i think the windshield is at a good height for me i can see over it and uh, no issues whatsoever so i'm in the lowest mode right now and uh yeah still pretty peppy man that 1050 engine of course uh i have to you know i mean it's a little bit more vibey but pretty good so far so good let's see how it goes in the on the rest of the ride here all right here we go Very smooth gear shifting, very smooth. I mean, I can easily tell. Like, I mean, there's it's, it's very crisp, very sharp. There's no guesswork, like, did I change gears? Yes, no, what? Very, very sharp, straight to the next gear. No issues, brakes. Oh, brakes are grabby. Wow, brakes are grabby, man. 
<laughs> good brakes so this was in three in uh, C mode going third gear let's see 36 miles an hour open the throttle you know it, it goes all right so I've got it in third gear same about 38 40 miles an hour and okay so B has a lot more power change that to a third gear and going down to 40 miles an hour okay so obviously the you know you can you can tell the you can tell the difference between the power modes I'll just that's what I was testing now as far as the information goes on the screen it looks just the same as the uh, the Gixxus 1000 that I was riding the GT easily readable no issues I can read everything on the screen and uh, I have no issues whatsoever glancing down and uh, and uh, and seeing what's uh, you know seeing the information that I need to see so, so this is definitely something you can probably ride all day do a thousand miles on easily easily so where's the Gixxus I'd probably say all right you know three four hundred miles five hundred maybe at the most I'm done uh, I would say maybe four four hundred miles maybe on that and 500 I'll be done this one yeah you can probably do double easily this is such a comfortable bike now you know what for a it, it is very it's very nimble that's for sure it's very light I don't I don't know I don't I don't feel that it is top heavy I feel like it is uh, yeah it's balanced pretty well but what I'm what I'm really impressed by how they've designed it and it's so it, it feels pretty narrow it doesn't feel like a big adventure bike you know um, of course I have no issues if you you know if it's a big adventure bike or a narrow one I mean you know they all it, it's all based on what you like as far as the looks go uh, you know for example the Africa twin also you know 1100 CC probably falls under the same category and that's a much you know like if you look at the adventure sports that's a little bit wider and uh, of course taller than this because that's the off you know the adventure sports they have the uh, 20 21 inch wheels up front uh, so yeah this uh, you know compared to that feels quite narrow and uh, even the you know the GS that I've been riding although you know that's not in the same competition league I guess but they're all competitors to each other I guess you know that's even that normal GS not the adventure but the normal GS is wider than this and this this is pretty narrow I mean this is pretty pretty easy to ride it's not intimidating at all not at all I mean the the size weight everything is pretty good so yeah I mean this is uh, yeah none of these have self cancelling uh, uh, indicators by the way oh look at that hear that induction sound nice <laughs> man and that was an a a mode yeah i mean it's nice i mean i'm in third gear 5500 rpm going 57 miles an hour you know there's vibrations through the handlebar uh a little bit the mirrors are you know i can see behind me it's not clear but it's not very un, you know very vibey as uh, either the handlebars are very slightly by me but you know where I'm feeling it most is the seat at on my you know at my butt I can feel the vibrations there so that was in third gear let me see how it is if I like go to top gear let's just go straight to sixth gear maybe not a good idea go to fifth felt like I was lugging the engine there so you know 62 miles an hour now I don't feel any any vibrations whatsoever so I guess it's vibey when you're pushing it at the higher rpms and uh yeah i mean let me see uh six gear yeah you, as long as you're cruising in lower rpms you're good but the moment you get on the throttle and you're at the higher rpm 5000 or above uh yeah you your, your butt will get a massage for sure and uh the handlebar surprisingly weren't as vibey as the seat and yeah but but it's got good power though man it's got decent power yeah I mean I would say pretty comparable to the Honda uh, you know Honda Africa twin bikes and uh, yeah this is pretty cool man the 2023 uh, V-Strom 1050 
of course, you know, if you want to go for like the really awesome looks, that DE model looks pretty damn cool. You know, it's got the uh, um, the, the the tubeless wire uh, spoke wheels, and it's got the bigger wheel up front, the 21 incher, and. Uh, You know that that thing looks cool uh it's got uh, a lot you know it's got like the the golden white blue color going and but i didn't want to ride that because i wanted to ride and see how this road bias setup would be uh because let's face it guys i mean if i ever bought an adventure bike i'm not taking it off road like oh you know like off road off road i mean i'm, I'm not i'm not i don't even know how to do off road <laughs> but if i was to go anywhere off the beaten path it would be like you know like a dirt road maybe or a you know gravel road or, or go up a trail you know to like camp or something that's probably the height of what i would use the adventure bike for i mean these are capable of motorcycles i don't want to piss people off here but these are capable of motorcycles but that's what most people would do is what i was getting at they would ride this on the road all right as just simple as that it would be long miles killed on the highway or the back roads and uh, then there would be a few percentage of people that would take it off the road you know just like on a trail or a beaten path you know like gravel or whatever and then there will be even a smaller group of people that would take it like off-road you know yeah man I mean I like it it's a it's a very nice bike the seat uh, you know you're coming off a of Harley every other seat's gonna be really hard I guess but this seat is not obviously not even close to being as hard as the Jixus 1000 that I rode earlier but uh, it, it is a little bit hard um, so I'm sure they make a comfort seat you know whatnot probably buy an Airhawk put it on here but still I do like the riding position my knees are not as bent uh, they're not really 90 degrees as well but they're not as bent and I'm like five foot nine or ten on a good day depending on what kind of shoes I wear I guess so so yeah the the seating position is very neutral on this and that's where I think that uh, you can do some uh, some good miles on this Pretty cool, pretty cool. I I am pretty, in, you know. Yeah, let me see if, how how does it feel when I stand on it. Oh, yeah. The handlebars are slightly lower, and I think I guess if you're gonna stand and ride this in the dirt, uh, you know, the windshield you probably want to put it in the lower position because it's right underneath me, and you know that's probably gonna be the first thing you'll hit if you have to slam on the brakes. But yeah, the handlebars seem a little bit low. Uh, I'm glad I stood up because I, I just I, everything seemed all right. But now that I stood up, I feel the handlebars are probably a couple inches too low. They probably should be up here. That would be ideal. But that's just how this bike is designed. You can always put a, a, a taller riser on there uh, and uh, raise the handlebars. But yeah, when I stood up, I felt like the uh, the uh, the handlebars were a little little too low. Little bit too low. The, the pegs though, I'll tell you, the pegs are solid, so you know how uh, if you've uh, stood up on the uh, KLR 650, the Kawasaki KLR 650, it feels like, uh, not comparing, I'm just using that as an example, it feels like the pegs, you know, the pegs are actually flexing so much that you feel like your your foot's gonna uh, slide off, not, not, nothing like that over here, it's very solid, and uh, yeah, that's good, but yeah, I mean, when I stand, I, I have to like, move up a little put my knees around the tank just for that leverage i guess i don't know just while i'm on the road i guess and uh it does feel like uh the handlebars are a little bit too low just a tad bit too low but i guess that that is something that can easily be fixed brakes are nice brakes are nice grabby brakes nice brakes this is such a saturated market now uh, so if I was to spend the money, would I buy this? Well, here's the thing. They are 
definitely cheaper than most of the competition that's for sure but having said that having said that um, I would I don't know I, I think I would go for the Africa twin it's just that I feel like uh, like even if you look at the Nordens right the Husqvarna Nordens I don't know I think uh, you know, they, I think I'd probably choose something like that. I just, I'm not into this whole retro shape, uh, the 80s, the late 80s, early 90s shape with the square headlights and whatnot. I'm not into that. The only thing I think it looks good on is the katana, but that's just my opinion. Don't kill me, please, if you're a V-Strom fan or looking to buy one. All I'm saying is that I would choose something different. Um, but I'm but that does not mean by any chance that you shouldn't look at this and take it for a test ride it is a very comfortable bike very smooth motorcycle and uh, the, the best thing is, is it's really nimble man it is actually pretty nimble and uh, and it's narrow so it's not very intimidating this is the not so very intimidating motorcycle all right all right, let's go ahead and uh, put in neutral. Easy to find neutral. Pretty cool. All right. Let's go ahead and shut it down. And park it. Very easy. It's This is kind of low compared to this one, which is your off-road biased, and that's a little bit taller. Scott probably has easily the better suspension and whatnot. So, yeah, this is the uh, V-Strom 1050. This is the more road biased one. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not an expert reviewer or anything, so these are just my first impressions and and uh, you know, like uh, you know, honest reactions to these motorcycles. So, uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the uh, uh, the test ride and uh, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. Uh, what do you guys think of the motorcycle? What do you guys think? Would you buy one? Uh, anything you like or don't like if you already own one, let me know. Uh, please hit that uh, like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe, share and until next time guys, be safe.